My name is Tim Sutinen from PrivacyProShop.com. So, you got yourself a shiny new Graphene OS phone and want to have VoIP service with it. What app should you use? And what's VoIP anyway? VoIP stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol, and it's used as an umbrella term for all sorts of apps that send and receive voice calls over the internet. However, the most common use for the term VoIP is for making calls to regular phone numbers, and the most common protocol for VoIP is SIP, which stands for Session Initiation Protocol. In order to make calls to regular phone numbers with VoIP, you need a SIP app, which is commonly called a SIP soft phone. So, why would you want to have VoIP service? The typical use case for VoIP service is to port your old cell phone number to it. That way you can still receive calls and texts at the old number that everybody and their mother knows, but not have it be attached to the SIM card on the phone you carry around. That said, minimizing the use of regular phone service is important, as the call metadata, in other words, call and text dates and times, durations, numbers, and so forth, is kept forever attached to you. Whenever possible, use end-to-end -end encrypted communications like Session Messenger. The Onion Routed Session Messenger is the most private messaging system on the planet, so if you need to be anonymous, look no further. Session doesn't ask for any identifying information from you, and Session User ID is a random 66-character hexadecimal string of numbers and letters. To make it easier for your contacts to find you on Session, you can purchase a Session ONS username with Oxen cryptocurrency, and the name is recorded in the Oxen blockchain forever. If you don't have Oxen Crypto, you can go to privacyproshop.com and purchase the name with most major cryptocurrencies or credit cards. If you pay with crypto, you can stay anonymous. Also, check out privacyproshop.com for other privacy tools like Nemo Mail, the anonymous email service over the Onion routed LokiNet, and anonymous VPN exit nodes over LokiNet. The first order of business is to choose a SIP capable VoIP app for Graphene OS. I prefer using open source apps when possible, so I opened FDroid and searched for VoIP. Results were Linphone, BearSIP, BearSIP Plus, and SIPDroid. Then I searched for SIP and it yielded a couple more apps, LumiCall and SIPCaller. Finally, a search for Call revealed Jammy. The difference between BearSIP and BearSIP Plus is that BearSIP Plus has video calling too. I don't need video calling over SIP, so I'm only testing bear SIP. SIPDroid and LumiCall kept on crashing, so I was unable to test them. Both of them seem to have been abandoned as far as development goes. SIPCaller had not been updated in 7 years, so I didn't even bother installing it, as it would be a major security hazard, even if it worked for some miraculous reason. That left me with bear SIP, Jammy, and Linphone. None of them had much documentation that I could find, so a lot of the testing is done by trial and error. That's typical with open source software. The developers have little time for documentation as they need to earn a living somewhere else. Documentation is rightfully left for others to do. For testing these apps, I'm using VoIP service from VoIP.ms, as it is relatively easy to configure. Relatively easy means that if you have used Asterisk or FreePBX systems for the last 20 years like I have, you'll feel right at home with VoIP.ms. If you need help with setting up VoIP, give me a call. My company provides tech support for VoIP services. Contact info is in the description below. VoIP.ms supports TLS and SRTP for encryption, so that's what I enabled on each one of the apps. I personally don't think encryption is that big of a deal, as regular phone service has dubious privacy anyway. If you encrypt the connection, nobody between you and the VoIP provider can listen in on the conversation or be able to intercept SMS text messages. But the VoIP company, the government, and any other upstream providers can monitor the calls and texts. So, what difference does it really make if I encrypt the first part of the connection when all of the other parts of the circuit can listen in at will. BearSIP is in active development. A new version of BearSIP was released during my testing. BearSIP feels like a bare-bones soft phone 
and that's in a good way. It covers the basics quite well. The app is about 21 megabytes in size. Bearship description at Fdroid says this. Bearship app is motivated by need for a secure open source SIP based VoIP user agent for Android that does not depend on proprietary third party push notification services. That sounds really good, doesn't it? The version I used was Bearship 58.0.0. Account setup. Setup with TLS encryption took some time to figure out as I couldn't find any documentation that would tell me how to do it. The GUI doesn't give an option to enable TLS. The way to enable it is by appending the server name with semicolon transport equals TLS when you set up the account. Then I needed to select SRTP-MAND under media encryption in the account settings. Bearship has 12 different codecs available, adequate for most users. VoIP.ms supports G.711U, G.722, G.729, and GSM. The only one not available in Bearship is GSM, and that's fine since G.729 is a superior low bandwidth codec anyway. Bearship's FDroid page says that it has the GSM codec. However, I couldn't find it on the list of available codecs in Bearship app itself. Bearship integrates with Android phone book, or it can have its own separate phone book, or both. You can choose that in the settings. You can also scroll through your Android contacts from within Bearship, but not search them. Oddly, Bearship's contacts page limits the number of contacts to 256 contacts shown. Making calls starts with tapping on the call Lee line and starting to type a name. That looks up the name in the phone book or you can enter a phone number using the numeric keypad. Then tap the green phone icon and the call will connect. Thank you for calling Suten and Computers. When you receive calls, there is a notification on top of the screen that allows you to answer or reject the call. Hi there. Redial is as simple as tapping the green call button again and it will pull up the most recently dialed number. If you tap the info button during a call, it shows the call length, codecs used, bitrate, packet loss, and jitter. That might become handy for troubleshooting and verifying codecs used. I could not find a three-way call function in Bearship, so I asked the developer and he confirmed that Bearship has no three-way call function. Bearship allows both blind and attended transfers of calls to another number. Bearship allows you to record a call, but you have to enable the recording prior to starting the call. To listen to the recording, tap call history, tap the call data and time, and calls to that number are listed. Under the duration field, the times that are bold are recordings. Tap any one of them to listen and the entire call is played back. SMS text messaging seems to work well and it showed notifications for new messages as expected. Bearship includes a voicemail message indicator function using a voicemail SIP URI. However, VoIP.ms doesn't support that, so you'll need to rely on notifications of new voicemails via email. Bearship also includes a feature that makes a password protected backup of the account configuration. It worked in my tests. Simply restoring the backup brought the account back online. Jammy is a peer-to-peer -peer encrypted messaging system that also happens to have a SIP soft phone. The development of Jammy is active and the version in FDroid was just three weeks old. Installation package size from FDroid was about 85 megabytes. The version I used was Jammy version 2023-0901-01. Account setup works using TLS and SRTP, so connections to your VoIP provider are encrypted. Actually, the only way I was able to make Jammy work was by using TLS and SRTP. It would not work with insecure connections at all. Jammy supports eight different codecs. It supports G.711U and G.722 for connections to VoIP.ms. The low bandwidth G.729 or GSM codecs are not available. When you open Jammy, you are presented with a chat screen. To make a call, you tap Start Conversation, type in the number using the keyboard, and tap the number under Public Directory, then press the Call button. 
I was able to make and receive calls with Jammy, but I had to know the phone numbers as it doesn't seem to have Android phone book integration. Also, it doesn't bring up the numeric keypad when dialing a number, so you have to use the normal keyboard for number entry. While on a call, you have access to a keypad if you have to enter touch tones during the call. You can also add more participants to the call to make it a conference call, but those contacts need to be in Jammy's contact list. In other words, you have to have called them before with Jammy. I tried Jammy on two Graphene OS devices, and it regularly deregistered from the SIP server. That, of course, could be related to my devices or to my connections, but I didn't see the same thing happen with BearSIP or Linphone. I also had many crashes when using Jammy. Maybe it's just my devices. Who knows? I was unable to make Jammy receive SMS text messages. Jammy sent text messages out just fine, but didn't receive them. It could be my devices, or it could be the app not supporting it, or me not knowing how to make it work. Linphone. Linphone is the best known of the bunch and has been around since 2001. According to their website, Linphone was the very first open source Linux application using the SIP protocol. Size of the installation package from FDroid is 42 megabytes. Linphone is being actively developed and the day I downloaded it from FDroid, the most recent version was 17 days old. Linphone's maturity shows as it has by far the most configuration options of these three apps. If the other apps don't work for your needs, Linphone will likely do the trick. The version of Linphone I used was 5.1.1. Linphone supports encrypted connections out of the box. If you have media encryption mandatory on your VoIP service, you will need to set the media encryption type to SRTP with VoIP.ms. Linphone has 12 different codecs, of which G.711U, G.722, and GSM are compatible with VoIP. .ms. Linphone integrates with Android contacts and you can search, create, and edit your contacts from within Linphone. For calling, Linphone greets you with a familiar dial pad. For some reason, you really have to press those buttons carefully to dial a number, as often it doesn't register the press and you have to retype. Not sure what the reason is, but this problem was present in both of the devices I tried. During a call, you can create conference calls and transfer calls. Conference calling is not exactly intuitive, but after several fumbled attempts, I figured it out. The call transfer only works as a blind transfer. Linphone shows lots of information about the call, codecs, bandwidth, encryption status, data loss rates, and such, which is useful for troubleshooting and verification. Linphone allows you to start recordings during the call meaning you don't have to start recording prior to calling. Call recording works well and you can find the recordings easily, play back and share them. Voicemail indicator on top of the screen shows the number of waiting messages. However, tapping it doesn't automatically dial or display voicemail. Also, the number one on the dial pad shows the vo voicemail icon. Unfortunately, tapping and holding it doesn't dial voicemail. There's probably a way to make it do that, but I just couldn't figure out how. SMS text messages go in and out just fine, and you get notifications of the messages. SMS messages appear in notifications, but don't necessarily show up in the listing of messages until you go to the chat settings and disable hide chat rooms from removed accounts. It has a helpful hint, quote, if you're missing chat rooms, try to uncheck this setting. Conclusions. My experience with Jammy suggests that while it works as a SIP soft phone, the only reason why you would want to use it is if you use Jammy already for peer-to-peer -peer messaging and don't want to have a separate app for VoIP. Using Jammy with only a SIP account configured regularly disconnected me from the SIP server and the app crashed several times. That might be a Graphene OS problem or problem with my devices, but I was unable to make Jammy work reliably. Linphone is a great choice. It works well, has most of the features one would want, and didn't have any crashes during my testing. Linphone has a couple of oddities, like the dial pad having trouble registering button presses and hiding SMS discussions, but overall it is a solid app. 
If you need to make three-way conference calls, record calls, and you need to see the voicemail indicator and also have excellent integration with Android contact list, Linphone is the best open source Android soft phone for you. BearSip is missing features like three-way calling, voicemail notifications, you can't start recording during a call, and there is no way to share the recordings. Set up with TLS is less than ideal, and the 256 contact display limit is a head scratcher. But on the positive side, it feels closest to a normal phone app as it uses the standard Graphene OS dial pad that takes input as fast as you can press the buttons. Call transfer is excellent and the SMS text messaging works better than the other apps. Bearship claims that it uses less battery power than Linphone, but I can't confirm that. So what will I use? I will be using Bearship as I don't need all of the functionality of Linphone and like the way Bearship handles dialing, call transfers, and SMS. But in any case, privacy conscious people should minimize their usage of public telephone system, even with VoIP. For those times that you must make and receive calls, VoIP is better than using the phone number on the SIM card because at least your location at the time of the call is not precisely known to the phone company. And that's all she wrote. What are your thoughts on VoIP? Comment below or ping me on Session Messenger. My session username is Privacy Pro Shop. If you're interested in digital privacy, cryptocurrencies, Session Messenger, LokiNet, and the Oxen Network, as well as other open source software, please check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thanks for watching and have a happy day.